Hey guys, welcome to another video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the problem with modern film critics and a lot about YouTubers and stuff, because that's what like a, a film critic is now. They're not people who work for like news articles and stuff like that. Some people do, but a lot of film criticism is now like on YouTube, the platform of YouTube, and even TikTok and shit like that. But it's very different now. Like, YouTube film critics back in, like, 2011, 2012, 2013, there's a big change now in 2022. And I don't like a lot of the shit they're doing now. And there's some good stuff. There's a lot of great film critics. I'm not here to call anyone specific out. I'm not going to name any channels by name, by no means. But I'm going to point out some of the problems I really have with modern film critics and I just I think people should just kind of stop doing these things to build their channels better and bigger and stuff and have I you know done some of these of course I'm guilty of a couple of these things not all but you know to errors to human but let's get let's get to it here are some of my issues I have with modern film criticism. The very first problem is people trying to copy others from the past. And I've talked about this before of the most annoying things YouTubers do. This is kind of like adding on to that. Like YouTubers could be like a broad term, but like film critics um, <laughs> I don't like when they try to copy another person's style. And I know people like the Schmoes, Jeremy Johns, and Chris Duckman, like, painted the way for new critics. Doesn't mean you be just like them. Have the same opinions as them, same style as them, and have, like, the same layout, same camera angles as them. I get their inspirations to a lot of people, doesn't mean you be just like them because that's all you will be is a copycat. You're not going to be you. You're just going to be a Chris Stuckman Jr., Jeremy Johns Jr., and you don't want that. You need to make your own name out, your own voice, not someone else's, your own. Um, next is <laughs> people relying heavily on other critic sources. This is, I'm talking about Metacritic, Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb. People relying on the numbers to have a film opinion and to give criticism is stupid. Do not use any of these sources. Film criticism is your own opinion. It's cool, it's fine to look at other people's opinions, but they should never jeopardize your opinion. Your opinion is your opinion. So I've seen, and a lot of critics, modern critics will never admit this. They won't, but I've seen it. I've really seen it. There are critics out there that all their scores they give for a movie, that, <laughs> all the scores they give when they rate a movie, they're all like right on with Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb and all that stuff. They're really right on. Like when the critics like it, they go with the critics. So if it's a positive on Rotten Tomatoes, they give a positive review. If it's a negative on Rotten Tomatoes, they give a negative review. Because they think because the majority of critics don't like this movie, I don't like this movie. And if the majority of the critics like it, I like this movie. And people are like, well, no, I'm forming my own opinion. And I'm like, no, you're forming your own opinion on top of the critics' opinion that you're also taking from. I've even seen people use same language from Rotten Tomatoes as critic consensus. I'm like, I can tell what you're doing, man. You're literally taking things from Rotten Tomatoes and putting it in your review. And I don't, I don't think anyone should do that. And a lot of critics are very much guilty of this. And they need to stop that. I believe, I 100% believe this. If Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, Metacritic, if none of them existed, 
we would have a lot more diverse opinions and we would have a lot more different opinions and i feel like we'd have a lot more passionate opinions too i really do i really do so many people like to go with the popularity or people like to go against the popularity just to get clicks and stuff and <laughs> i feel like because like having those sites people want to seem like they're smart critics and they know what they're talking about so they go with the norm and they're like oh yes i know all about the autistic films and stuff i know what i'm talking about trust me critics agree with me i'm like no 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 no. you agree with the critics critics don't agree with you you agree with the critics you're not forming your own opinion you're listening to opinions of others it's not real and it's not genuine and that's why a lot of people don't want to subscribe to some newcomers because they're like seen this before i can just go around tomatoes and i'll know your fucking opinion <laughs> that's the point about relying on critic sources everyone will know your opinion before your movie review comes out like everyone's going to know like well it's positive around tomatoes i know he's gonna like it <laughs> so don't do that don't do that <laughs> um next is Liking a movie because of a studio or a fan base and stuff. Or disliking it for that reason as well. This is another thing a lot of critics are very guilty of. Like, hardcore Marvel fanboys. They will like everything Marvel pushes out. Even if, probably even deep down, they don't like it. But they will always be positive on any show or movie that Marvel comes out with, they will be positive because they'll get like early access, screeners, they'll get all that stuff. And I've seen, I'm like, I know, okay. <laughs> there have been people accusing YouTubers of being paid for positive reviews. That's not true. That's not true. Has it happened? Yes, but I. it's not true. People aren't paid for positive reviews. However, that being said, there are critics who are, are more positive on things like Marvel and Star Wars so they can get more access and like early access to movies and shows because they're so positive. They give Marvel and Star Wars good publicity and feedback for them, especially like on Rotten Tomatoes, like critics on Rotten Tomatoes give positive scores and... Marvel will give them early access. They'll give them free shit and stuff. So, yes. Because you can see on Rotten Tomatoes, like, She-Hulk. Look at the critic score and the audience score. The audience clearly hates it, but the critics love it. And it's a little weird. It's a little weird. <laughs> and I know everyone's like, well, the, 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 the audiences that hate it, they're just angry people and they're trolls. I'm like, no, they're not. They're not. I don't like it. And trust me. I work in the public. I've talked to a lot of people about, about She-Hulk. Not a lot of people in the public like it. <laughs> so it's, yeah. I don't think you should sell yourself to a studio or anything just to get, like, early screeners and access and be approved on Rotten Tomatoes and stuff. Now, if you get invited to an early screener, be honest. If you think the movie sucks... Do it. Just say the movie's terrible. The fun fact is, um, the flick pick talked about this on the live stream. He said he was going to go to an early screener of Gods of Egypt when that movie came out. And the director told John to give the movie a positive review. And John said, I will not do that. I will see your movie, but I will not give a positive review just because you tell me to. And then after that, they did not want him to go to this early screener. Because the director and some of the producers wanted a big critic to give Gods of Egypt a big praise so people will go see it. And John said, no, I will not do that. But I know there are a lot of critics who would say, yes, I will do that. And I even see him kind of with like Chris Stuckman because he interviewed a couple directors for their movies but their movies end up being really terrible. But Chris Tuckman was more nicer on those movies because he talked to the filmmakers and stuff. I'm like, you got to be honest. 
even if you're best friends or brothers or sisters, like if you're related to the filmmaker, it doesn't matter. You need to be honest and give films your own critique and how you feel about it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. If you're afraid, then you should be a film critic. <laughs> And that kind of leads me into, like, Chris Stuckman. Don't be like Chris Stuckman. <laughs> I need to elaborate. I'm not here to bash Chris Stuckman. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not here to do that. I'm not here to say he's terrible. I, I was a big fan of him, actually. I really, really enjoyed Chris Stuckman. And I, I heard he's a, a great person. He, I know he's a father now. It's really great. Good things are happening for him. He's becoming a filmmaker. He's living his dream. It's great. It's fantastic. However, <laughs> what he has done, a lot of other... This almost goes back to my first thing about copycatting. He's doing a thing now that he's not being negative on movies now. And the funniest thing is he got famous off of bashing terrible films. Something that Doug Walker has been doing like, years before even Stuckman started, but Chris Stuckman started this thing called Hilariosity, and it was bashing terrible films, and it was funny. It really was funny. It was Chris Stuckman's best work. And a lot of people looked up to that, and some people kind of, like, got inspired to, like, you know, make fun of bad movies as well, but in 2020, was it 2020? Yeah, 2020, even maybe 2019, he didn't want to bash movies anymore uh, yeah i'd say 2020 sorry yeah he didn't want to bash movies anymore he wanted to be positive and he knew because he was a filmmaker now that <laughs> you should be nice to all filmmakers that they, it takes a lot of hard work to make a movie he's right very fair very fair and he's like we shouldn't be negative on them I shouldn't overly criticize them i don't agree with that and uh, Chris Stuckman, and I know he obviously did that because he's trying to get in Hollywood and be a filmmaker, so he doesn't want to bash them because he's going to maybe want to work with these people and stuff. So I get what he's doing, <laughs> but a lot of people followed that thing. They like, followed what Chris Stuckman was doing. They're like, we shouldn't criticize films. We should be positive on everything. And I don't agree with that. Criticism can be positive or negative, and it's just criticism. Criticism is a good thing. People should be criticized because when filmmakers are doing something wrong and we point it out, it helps filmmakers learn for their next movie. That's the, that's it. We're not here to get too personal. Like valid criticism is a is a good thing. And, yeah, people are like, oh, you shouldn't bash movies. I'm like, why not? And I know there are channels out there who make a living off of bashing movies. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. They're just movies. That's it. They're just movies. Fictional characters, fictional stories, they're just movies. And you know what? If, that, if that's how they make a living. And people seem to like that because it's not of the norm anymore. People want to be more you know, intellectual on the reviews and seem very smart and like, I like film is an art. All films are art and we should respect and love all films. And I'm like, to a certain degree, maybe, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> That's not who I am. And I will bash any movie that I think is terrible. Don't like it. Kiss my ass. <laughs> And let's talk about our very last thing. Very last thing is, <laughs> gotta say it, blaming others for a film's success or failure. A lot of people have seen doing this when I, I've watched podcasts. I'm going to elaborate on what, what I'm talking about. So I watch podcasts. People diff with different, you know, opinions on certain things. That's for damn certain. But we have this thing when a movie succeeds. Um, people are like, oh, it's because of this, because of that. And I'm like, 
No, that's not true. I'm just, I'm very, <laughs> I know it pure. I know you're all thinking like, what, what are you talking about? I'm trying to be kind of subtle with what I'm saying because <laughs> it's politics sometimes. Some people are saying like, when you put politics in your movie, the movie will always fail. That is not the case at all. It is sometimes the case though. <laughs> but we get movies and shows like Rings of Power People are calling Rings of Power, like, woke and stuff. And it's not doing very well, Rings of Power. And it's a lot of people because people are J.R.R. token, like, purists and stuff. And people hate the show because it's a woke show, they say. I'm here to clarify this. Rings of Power is not a bad show because it's woke. It's a bad show because it sucks. <laughs> It's a badly written, stiltedly acted, horribly executed show that makes no sense in the lore of Lord of the Rings. Nothing to do with woke politics. Nothing at all. So people are complaining about that. Stop it. <laughs> it's not true. They've been saying the same thing about House of the Dragon, but Has Dragon is killing it. It's a great show. But also people say, like, even when the movie The Women King came out, and people were criticizing it. There are critics that are saying, this movie's not doing well because those anti-wokers are saying this movie's terrible and people shouldn't see it. That is not true at all. That's not true. People don't want to see The Woman King because of how disrespectful it is to the real history. And people don't want to watch a movie that's disrespecting a culture and what really happened. That's why people won't see it. But people are saying it's the anti-wokers. That's their problem. This film isn't succeeding. I'm like, no, no, no. That's not true. It's not true. There's like this war going on with the the the, the anti wokers and I guess the wokers. <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> the people who the anti wokers call woke, and then the people that call them the anti wokers. There's like a battle between these sides, and it's so ugly right now in the film criticism YouTube space. And it's, like, people are calling each other out. And when a movie does terrible, people are like, it's your fault this this did terrible. And when a movie does good, like, this is because we did it. Like, it's insane right now. Absolutely insane. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, and I've been on both sides. I, I, I'm kind of more on, like, the anti-wokers because I am an anti-woker. But... I will flat out call the anti walkers out when they say something fucking stupid. When they say, this is woke, this is woke. I'm like, no, it's not. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Just shut up. But, again, the other side is bad, too. Like, oh, God, it's insane what some people say. And I get calling on some of the celebrities of the hypocrisy. They say, I've done it. Because celebrities don't give a fuck about us. <laughs> but, like, it's crazy now. It's absolutely insane. And people need to calm down a little bit. You need to calm down a bit. If you want, you can talk about whatever you want on your channel. That's It's your channel. It's your audience. It's your space. But don't blame others for a film or television's success or failure. It's the film and television's fault. They didn't market it properly or people just weren't interested. So don't blame others. Blame the actual project. Just saying. And like if someone is a woke, uh, if someone is woke or someone is an anti-woker, who cares? Like they're, both sides are really fucking annoying. I get it. They are. They are. And I know I've been on both sides and stuff and more on one side than the other, but both sides, oh shit, I'm knocking shit over. Both sides can be super annoying. Just don't watch them. Don't watch them. Don't listen to them. And do your own thing. But people get really amped up on that shit. But, and I get it. It causes the drama. Drama sells. I get it. People need to, you know, calm down a bit. <laughs> I need to calm down a bit sometimes. I, I get a little worked up too, you know. Like, I get a little crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, that is my, like, scatterbrain thoughts on 
the problem with modern, modern film critics. Let me know in the comments below. What are your opinions on modern criticism, modern YouTube film critics? What do you think they need to change to do a little better and stuff? And what are things you do like now more than the past? Let me know in the in the comments below. Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please subscribe to this channel and join the dark side.